T.D. Jakes and the FBI are now pursuing Gino Jennings for speaking out against his friendship with P. Diddy and his refusal to preach the truth about homosexuality. Jennings stated that following a lengthy conversation with the Black Caucus group of pastors, it became clear that T.D. Jakes had taken severe actions. Jakes reportedly rallied his legal staff, MPs, and fellow ministers to contact the Federal Communications Commission once more. Their goal is to silence Gino Jennings by banning him on all channels and taking legal action against anyone who discusses him on social media. This discovery complicates the current tale, implying a high-stakes conflict between important religious figures. Jennings, unwavering in his determination to speak the truth, will not back down from any challenge. He made it apparent that this is not a new situation for him, as he has previously been targeted by the FBI. Gino Jennings brazenly stated that everyone wants him to cease preaching against homosexuality. He made it abundantly plain that he will not deviate from what the Bible says, and no amount of money will change his mind about teaching the truth. He's holding firm, refusing to let anything disturb his determination to convey the unadulterated message of the Bible. Tuesday evening, we had a long talk. <laughs> with the head of the Black Caucus and very respectable, very polite. He said, Pastor Jennings, let me tell you that this is how it is. The Potter House, T.D. Jake Stretch, have specifically above all others, targeted the truth of God. He lawyered up, contact his lawyers, and even if he seek to reach out to politicians and whatever, stars and men and women of renown to connect with him, to contact the FCC, to ban me off all airways and to sue those who's speaking about him on social media. <laughs> well, that would include the suit going to some of his followers. Not only that, they want me to stop speaking against homosexuality. <laughs> Hell, we have to freeze first. Amen. Hell, we have to freeze over. Now, some of you folk that have commented last week when I first told you how the caucus reached out to us, and someone said they want to get Pastor Jennings behind doors, and he'd probably sell out and if they offer him money. <laughs> you don't know Pastor Jennings. I'm not a whore. You can't buy me. <laughs> He said, now, there are other social media groups specifically targeting the first church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're the FBI, CIA, or any political faction, social or religious, who's getting paid or oh, if you're a member of some church, some religious order, man or woman, if you are by any means getting paid to come in first church, you are nothing but a prostitute for the ones that's paying you. Because when religion, when any faction, religious, political, social, can pay you money 
to come to God's house to spy out. If you're the FBI or CIA or anybody, if you think by any means that we are deterred, you know, anytime they want to send spies to spy us out, what we're preaching pose a strong threat to them. If I was Joel Austin, you wouldn't bother me. But because they label us as militant, some people over the air say, I'm judgmental. You know when you tell the truth, they say you're judging them. I'm not judging you. God gonna do that. I'm just calling the world attention to what God said before I was born. According to the Black Caucus group of pastors, T.D. Jock appears to be taking dramatic measures in response to Gina Jennings' brave preaching, attempting to quiet him and ban him from all radios. Jennings' unshakable devotion to truth, even in the face of potential censorship, provides a compelling picture of a pastor who will not compromise God's word or his values for the sake of popularity or conformity. T.D. Jakes attempts to quiet Gino Jennings and ban him from the airwaves reveal not just a schism within the religious community, but also potential bad ramifications for him and his supporters. Suppressing dissenting views risks impeding open discourse and good debates in the religious domain. Targeting Jennings in this manner may unintentionally contribute to a lack of diversity of opinions, stifling the growth and enrichment that might result from a broad exchange of ideas. The attempted suppression may give the impression that opposing viewpoints are not welcome, creating an environment that discourages critical thinking and constructive criticism. Furthermore, such behaviors may cause splits among followers, escalating tensions within the greater religious community. Attempting to silence a preacher recognized for his strong devotion to biblical principles may instill a sense of persecution in people who agree with Jennings' views potentially producing rifts that go beyond the two preachers' immediate disagreement. In a broader sense, the move to ban Gino Jennings from the airwaves could be interpreted as an assault to free expression, raising worries about the suppression of voices that question the status quo. It emphasizes the significance of creating an environment in which opposing viewpoints may coexist allowing people to engage critically with varied ideas and make educated judgments about their beliefs. The negative impact of T.D. Jake's conduct is not only the potential silencing of Gino Jennings, but also the broader ramifications for the spirit of open discourse, religious unity, and the ideals of free expression. Rather than attempting to silence Gino Jennings, T.D. Jock might take a more positive approach to resolving their disputes and encouraging a healthier discussion within the religious community. Engaging in a meaningful conversation with Jennings could be a productive strategy to close the gap and discover common ground. By initiating a conversation, both preachers might examine biblical truth, share thoughts, and identify areas of agreement. This method not only increases understanding, but also serves as an example for followers. Emphasizing the value of courteous speech even when confronted with opposing viewpoints. Alternatively, T.D. Jakes should consider changing his own preaching style in response to Jennings' constructive critique. This self-reflection and willingness to adapt can help with personal and spiritual growth, as well as demonstrate humility and an openness to refining one's beliefs in the face of scrutiny. If T.D. Jakes finds it difficult to reconcile their disagreements, he could choose to focus on his own ministry rather than engaging in a public feud. Ignoring the criticism may help de-escalate tensions and allow each preacher to pursue their own courses without unneeded strife. Choosing open communication, self-reflection, or simply focusing on one's own journey are more beneficial options than seeking to silence dissenting voices. Such approaches have the ability to foster unity, understanding, and growth within the religion. T.D. Jake's determination to take legal action against those who criticize or speak about him raises worries about the possible harm to free speech and the open flow of ideas. Suing people for expressing their beliefs can have a chilling effect, discouraging others from openly sharing their ideas 
or offering constructive criticism. This approach not only limits freedom of expression, but it may also give the impression that important persons are immune to examination. Furthermore, pursuing legal action might exacerbate tensions and lead to a divisive environment within the religious community. Instead of encouraging unity and understanding, this strategy may aggravate tensions and widen the gap between Jake's supporters and those who have reservations or opposing views. A much better strategy for TD Jakes would be to embrace transparency and open communication. Engaging in respectful talks with critics offers for a more nuanced knowledge of opposing viewpoints and the opportunity to address problems. Responding to criticism with humility, self-reflection, and a desire to continual improvement can boost credibility and promote personal and spiritual development. Furthermore, Popular figures like T.D. Jakes can benefit from fostering a culture of open communication and constructive criticism inside their own groups. Creating outlets for healthy debate and recognizing the diversity of viewpoints can result in a more strong and resilient religious community. Rather than using legal means to suppress critics, T.D. Jakes should take a more positive approach by embracing debate, openly addressing issues, and cultivating an environment in which various viewpoints are appreciated. This method not only maintains free speech values, but also helps to expand and unite the group he leads. T.D. Jake's strategy to target, sue, and prolong the situation in order to quiet critics may have an unintended negative effect. People instinctively join in discussions and offer their perspectives, and these talks usually diminish over time. However, by pursuing legal action against those who share their opinions, Jake risks prolonging the dispute, making it more persistent and memorable. This approach not only generates ongoing debates, but it also brings attention to the criticisms he wishes to silence. Legal disputes can be drawn out, keeping the controversy in the public glare for an extended period of time, which goes against the normal flow of public conversation. Furthermore, by preferring legal conflict to open communication, T.D. Jakes may be unintentionally exacerbating the bad perception of his attitude to criticism. Embracing transparency and openly addressing issues could result in a faster settlement and allow the controversy to gradually dissipate, as opposed to the prolonged public attention that legal action may produce. Jake's actions may be inadvertently perpetuating the problem, having a longer-term impact than if he had taken a more conciliatory and open attitude. Emphasizing open communication and understanding rather than legal battles will likely result in a faster conclusion and allow the disagreement to fade away over time. Targeting another church because of doctrinal disagreements can cause division and enmity in the society. Instead of creating unity and understanding, such behaviors may breed hatred, damage relationships, and undermine the basis of mutual respect among believers. It undermines the larger message of love, compassion, and acceptance offered by most religious beliefs and may drive people away from the faith entirely. This approach undermines the church's core values of tolerance and open debate. Furthermore, a pastor who targets another church might foster a poisonous climate in which theological disagreements are weaponized rather than handled constructively. Congregants may feel forced to conform to a predetermined set of beliefs, restricting personal spiritual growth and investigation. This inflexible approach can stymie the development of a varied and inclusive religion community by limiting the interchange of ideas and the opportunity for collective progress. Such activities not only harm the reputation of the targeted church, but they also reflect negatively on the larger religious community. It provides the impression that intolerance and aggressiveness are acceptable ways of dealing with theological conflicts, providing a poor example for both members and viewers. In a broader societal context, this action may contribute to an unfavorable impression of religious institutions, encouraging distrust and perpetuating preconceptions about religious divisiveness. It is critical for religious leaders to highlight the value of respectful discussion and understanding, creating an environment in which people can express their varied opinions without fear of retaliation or condemnation. Finally, the growing situation between Gino Jennings, T.D. Jakes, 
and the purported attempts to silence Jennings through legal means exposes the intricacies of the Christian world. The clash of ideologies and doctrinal disagreements has generated a high-stakes conflict that might have far-reaching implications for the spirit of open speech, unity, and freedom of expression. Instead of pursuing legal action, T.D. Jakes might take a more positive approach by embracing transparency, engaging in open debate, and creating an environment in which opposing viewpoints are appreciated. This strategy not only supports free speech ideals, but it also helps to grow, understand, and unite the religious community. Religious leaders must set a positive example by promoting tolerance and respectful debate. Religious leaders must set a positive example by promoting tolerance and respectful debate. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed viewing this movie, and I pray that we all continue to strive to please God.